Welcome back to Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen Rose, Steve Kerr has some bad news for Warriors fans. He started breaking out the schedule and the calendar, and he said, look, he had surgery on July 1st. It's usually about a year, and if you look at April 1st for him to come back, that's nine months, and that would only work if the rehab went absolutely perfect. It makes a lot of sense, but most of us kind of had Clay coming back after the All-Star break or something like that. He says Clay is unlikely to play. What are the ramifications on the Warriors' season if they're the entire season without Clay Thompson? This isn't a surprise. And take it from somebody that was in the building, not only when Clay got hurt, but when KD got hurt. Don't sleep on this now. Their medical staff will not in any way, shape, or form put him out there unless he's 110% based on the fallout that happened with KD. And subsequently, he was leaving anyway. Ultimately, he left the team. And so for their fellow Splash brother, you want to take caution and -hmm. precaution as much as possible. And that timeline is exactly right. Now, we've seen medical marvels, as I call them, say like an Adrian Peterson come back from an ACL injury in seemingly six or seven months. But this is a different scenario. And if you're playing it cautious, this is exactly how you should approach it. So I think one of the first sort of logical leaps that you take when you get this information is, will the Warriors make the playoffs? And at first I was like, oh, no, they can't make the playoffs without Clay." But the more I started thinking about it and looking at their roster, I still have them in the playoffs. What about you? It's almost like the All-Star game. People always talk about somebody should make the squad, but they don't take somebody else off. Mm -hmm. The same exact thing I want to do here for the playoffs. If you want to take the Warriors out, who are you putting in over them? The Kings? The no. Mavs? No. Because the Spurs getting in. The other seven squads are a lot. Portland, Utah, Denver, Houston, Lakers, Clippers. Blazers. I will be breaking down my playoff predictions Ooh. next segment. Ooh. And I can't wait for you to disagree Ooh. with me, Jalen Rose. Ooh. But first, we stick with the Warriors and a gentleman on their team by the name of Wardell Stephen Curry. I don't know. Last time I checked, was a very good basketball player. Well, Michael Jeffrey Jordan was on the Today Show, and here's what he had to say about Steph Curry. It's unbelievable. If you could pick four guys for your pickup team, four guys that you play anybody else with, Hakeem Olajuwon, Magic Johnson, and Scottie Pippen, and James Worthy. That was six years ago. Lots happened in the league in six years. Would you keep the same four? In a heartbeat. When I'm going in the trenches, I played against and with all these guys. I'm going with who I know. Every single night, that responsibility to go out there and represent greatness every single night. So Steph Curry shouldn't be offended when he watches this. I hope not. He's still a great player. Not a Hall of Famer yet, though. (laughs) He's not. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. How much tequila were they drinking, Jay? (laughs) How much tequila were they drinking? Not a Hall of Famer yet? Not a Hall of Famer yet. So the one thing I learned about settings like that is that clearly wasn't the first drink they had. (laughs) Okay, number one. Number two, let me just say this. Just like I said about the All-Star competition, if you want to put Steph on that squad, who you taking off? Well, whoever Michael Jordan, I'm not going to disagree with Michael Jordan about who Michael Jordan wants to play with, but it's more the Hall of Fame comment. And Jalen, you're part of a different generation of basketball players, and I've been listening to your generation of basketball players talk as the decades go by. It does kind of seem like there is a little bit of disrespect. There's a little bit of hate about the way the game has changed. And I think that there's also, particularly about Steph Curry and the style with which he plays the game, it's considered soft because he shoots too many jump shots. Do you think this is sort of like a generational thing that Jordan is expressing? I don't necessarily believe it's a generational thing. However, I disagree with him because Steph is a unique outlier because he already has three championships. He's played at least 10 years and he shattered so many records already. So based on that, I believe he's definitely a Hall of Famer right now if he never played another basketball game. But here's what I have also learned. What you're saying about the game being different now allows players to put up big numbers and play a lot longer. So there will be a time where we're doing this show and we're acknowledging the Hall of Very Good, allowing people to get in, not necessarily Mm -hmm. people that were the best of their era. To me, if you're a Hall of Famer, you should be all NBA. 
You should be one of the best people in your era. It should not be, a, you should be an MVP candidate. Like th those to me are Hall of Fame type things. And Steph Curry, the only unanimous MVP, has already achieved enough to be a Hall of Fame. Yeah, Steph Curry checks all those boxes. Michael Jordan, great player. Maybe not the best evaluator of talent when it comes oh, to who's oh, Hall of Fame worthy. Oh, maybe not. Just maybe not. Just maybe not. Wow. Maybe not. Wow. Moving on. It is now time for the Jalen of the Week. This time, the Jalen of the Week is a gentleman by the name of Jalen Brown of the Celtics. He signed an extension for four years, $115 million. Jalen Rose, what does it tell you that the Celtics made this type of commitment to Jalen Brown? It may sound old, but it's really important for me to say as an elder statesman, I always pay attention to talented athletes that will be successful without sports. Mm -hmm. And those are the people you invest in when they show you that they're really good at their sport. And he's a two-way competitor that can dribble pass, an improved shooter, plays multiple positions, in the era of positionless basketball. They took him top three, four overall in the lottery. I think this is a smart investment for the Celtics. You now have him locked up, Hayward locked up, Kimba locked up. At some point, getting Tatum locked up, that's a terrific core moving forward. So it's not the top player in the game type of move that we felt like Danny Ainge was gonna be able to pull off when he was able to garner so many assets and draft picks. But at the same time, it does create a core that if I'm a Celtic fan, I'll be really proud to watch play basketball every night. I think it's a smart move from the Celtics. I love Jalen Brown. I love anybody that plays defense. I think people look past that all times. 50% of the game, Jalen Brown is an elite defender that can defend a lot of different positions. And as you mentioned, he's an extremely smart basketball player, which does play in to Brad Stevens schemes. Jalen, when we come back, I will tell you who I have going to the playoffs and exactly what seed in both conferences I can't wait. right I can't after wait for this. this. Stay tuned.